Meal timing is irrelevant to body composition. I'm talking about body composition. Meal timing may matter to you individually as far as your energy levels goes or as far as holding you over so you're not hungry again. That's fine. Some people need food to focus in the morning. Some people need to eat before a workout to feel strong. That's true, but that's all personal preference and that goes no further than energy and comfort. But when you're talking about body composition, fat loss, fat gain, muscle gain, physique goals, meal timing and meal frequency is completely irrelevant. Now the question I got on my fan page the other day is, Nick, where do you get this information? Can you cite these sources backing up these claims you're making? And to you, I encourage you to flip your point of view for a minute. Most of us learn our information, unfortunately, from our bros at the gym, the big guy at the gym, or somebody we know that tells us this and that about nutrition. Usually what they hear from the media because supplement companies and gimmick companies will throw out all this information, they'll twist and skew studies, and they'll take things out of context just to kind of make more money. But let's be honest, most of us have never actually studied, in-depthly studied, real human thermodynamics, nutritional science, how the body actually metabolizes protein and other macronutrients. When you go and study, the nutritional science, the actual fundamental laws of our body and how the system works, you then begin to flip it and you find yourself questioning the bros and asking them, where is your proof? Where's your evidence that meal timing matters? Where's your proof that you need protein half an hour after a workout? Where's your proof that breakfast affects metabolism or meal frequency affects metabolism? Where's your proof for all that? Because if you or anybody were to ever study the science of how this body works, you realize that those claims are based on nothing that has to do with the reality of our body. And I'm gonna break down why. And what I even did is included like 20 different legitimate studies in the info box of this video that back up everything. So there's no questioning here. Big shout out to Casey Fredrickson on the Nick Wright Bodybuilding fan page. I was discussing this with somebody just the other day, and he went ahead and linked all these studies for me. I had them linked a long, long, long time ago in a status, probably about a year ago, and he went ahead and did it all for me, so I included them in the video here for you guys. We're going to break it down nice and simple for you. Number one, metabolism. It's not affected by how many meals you have throughout the day or how small your meals are. It's definitely not affected by whether or not you have breakfast. In fact, contrary to what most people believe, Metabolism is not even based on how frequently you eat. Most people think, well, if I have three meals a day, it's going to be moving nice and slow because it only needs to burn off three meals. If I have six meals a day, it's going to be burning on double time. And then I can actually trick my metabolism. And when I'm not eating, it's going to be so turned up and burning that it's going to continue burning all the fat that I'm storing. Not how it works. Your body's based on a very simple system of energy levels. A calorie is in fact a unit of energy by definition. It's based on energy taken in versus energy taken out. If you take in more energy than you're burning, you're in a caloric surplus and you're bulking. If you take in less energy than you're putting out, then you're in a caloric deficit and you're cutting for aesthetics. And if you're taking in just the right amount that you're putting out, you're plateauing on a maintenance level. That's how simple it is. Obviously, you have different macronutrients which help play their roles in different areas of that energy. Carbs and fats store energy, protein breaks down into amino acids for muscle recovery, etc. And then of course you have your micronutrients and your fiber for health and function. But other than that, it's pretty simple. Now your metabolism is something that helps moderate the expenditure of that energy coming in. And how does it do it? It takes into account how much energy you're taking in and how consistently you're taking it in, and it simply adjusts to it. It's like riding a 10 speed up a hill. If you're riding a 10 speed up a hill for a long period of time, your legs are gonna start burning, what do you do? You shift gears, so suddenly it's a much smoother ride for you. That's what happens. Your metabolism is based not on how many times a day you eat, but on how much you're taking in, how many calories overall you're taking in, and for how long you're taking them in. It has to be on a consistent amount of time. Your metabolism takes two to three weeks to even recognize a change of calorie intake and adapt to it. So for those of you saying that, well, my metabolism was on full blast yesterday because I had eight small meals a day, but today it's only running half speed because I skipped breakfast and I only had three big meals a day. Well, no, because if that's even how metabolism worked, it would still take 
two to three weeks of you eating those three big meals a day with no breakfast for it to notice that change and finally shift gears and adjust to it and adapt to it. But at the end of the day, you can't trick your metabolism. You can't give it eight meals a day and get it in a full burning mode and have it burn more after those eight meals are done. Your metabolism will work with however many calories it's dealing with, it's being dealt, and that's it. So you're taking 3,000 calories a day, it's going to adapt to 3,000 calories a day, as long as you've been taking it for two to three weeks consistently. No more, no less. It doesn't matter if those 3,000 calories are taken in one meal or eight meals. One meal a day, another great subject we always talk about. Nick, if you have one meal a day, even three big meals a day of all your calories, your body will not be able to consume all that. It won't be able to metabolize all that, and the protein will certainly go to waste because you can only take in 30 to 50 grams of protein a sitting. First off, 30 to 50 grams of protein is talking about direct protein to muscle, how much your muscles are going to actually synthesize, take in, and apply to themselves right there in the spine. That's around 30 to 50 grams. That is not to say the rest of the protein goes to waste. The rest of the protein does get broken down into amino acids into the bloodstream and it will be metabolized. Once your muscles are done using up that source of protein, they'll continue to take in more. AKA, you take in a lot of protein in one sitting, your muscles are just going to take a lot of time to eventually metabolize and use almost all of it. I say almost because different sources of protein do have different levels of bioavailability. So you may not use all the protein in there, but that's not because of your body. That's just because of the type of protein you're using. So if you're taking in 3,000 calories a day, it doesn't matter if it's all in one certain serving, your body will metabolize all 3,000 calories of that. It'll just take all day, pretty much. It'll take a long time. Nighttime, eating before bed. Everyone's worried about the GH levels, the hormonal response that goes on to eating carbs before bed. guys. Just like cortisol, just like almost any sort of hormonal related uh, frenzy we've gone into, the actual levels of hormonal manipulation that go on from eating carbs before bed is so minimal, it makes zero difference at all. It's not going to have any effect on your actual body composition or physique, nothing. It's literally just like, it's like daily nature for your body. It makes zero effect. Thermal dynamics don't just magically change in the human body based on what time it is. All right, time is the concept we've made up anyway. Human thermodynamics do not have a stopwatch, they don't change. They're based on overall energy intake for a long extended period of time. It makes a lot more sense saying it like that, does it not? Protein post-workout. Guys, this has been busted ages ago. I still can't believe anybody actually be believes the 30 to 45 minute post-workout window of opportunity. Protein synthesis, guys, how protein actually works by science, by definition, how protein works is protein synthesis becomes elevated after a workout. Yes, that's true. That's why natural guys will need to work out more frequently, multiple times a week, to continue elevating that protein synthesis since guys on steroids have it elevated naturally for them. Thing is, it stays elevated for like 24 or more hours around a workout. So that window of opportunity is actually 24 hours. AKA, it brings us right back to you need to just get your protein needs in for the day to be set. That's it. And honestly, guys, protein metabolization takes some time. So realistically, it would be the protein you're taking in pre-workout that would actually kick in post-workout anyway. So that's it, guys. Hope this helps. Meal timing is irrelevant to body composition based on the default science of our body. All links are, are, are provided below. Metabolism is literally just, it's our gears on our 10 speed bike. If we're going downhill, we can shift the gears up. If we're going uphill, first time it's a very period of time, we realize this is a lot more load for us to take in, so we might shift the gears down just to adapt to it. That's all metabolism is. It's not, the, your body doesn't know. Human thermodynamics does not know what time it is in the day, so you're fine. Protein synthesis stays elevated, hormonal responses are completely irrelevant, it's just basic nature throughout the day. Just get your calories, your macros, and your micronutrients in for the day, day to day. Try to make it quality, and you guys are golden. Subscribe now.